Welcome everyone. Today, me and my team will be representing Project EFI. My name is Paul Mardita. Uh, my name is Mahmoud Kofi, so I'm a computer engineer and the lead software and testing engineer. My name is Dane Kali. And I'm Eftar Salman. Here is the general outline of what we will be discussing further today in this presentation. So behind our project motivation, we want to explore a growing industry that had potential for our, our product and also had a very nice thing we can market to. Uh, we joined the electric vehicle industry since it's been on the rise since 2010. Alone in the past two years, it grow, has gained growth to 55% across the whole world. The United States is the second largest market for electrical vehicles. So, and also as a benefactor, car manufacturers like BMW, Audi have yet to release a wireless charging unit for the electrical vehicles. So our only competition would technically be third party companies, as well as um, the whole motivation behind our project was to tap into our growing industry and apply a new technology, such as wireless power transfer. So owning electric car just got better, right? So imagine going into your garage without even having to plug into anything to your battery pack and just being charged. It gets better because you could not even monitor on your smartphone. Our system, uh, our project uh, team worked on we researched that ideally from the ground to the car, there's a distance of nine inches approximately. With our system installed, we get four inches of the distance between, which is enough for the wireless power transmission. With that said, our system not only provides wireless power charging to the car, it also smart, uh, provides a smart solution to our car system, so you could easily monitor, which, um, which not only is uh, helpful for the customers to access it easily, it's more comfortable, and it's like you know, easy to monitor. The system, the way it works, it's a little bit different from our prototype version. This is like, you know, coming straight from the AC grid. So you have a transmitter coil underground, and as you drive up to your car, your car uh, picks up the transmitter coil, and once they're like approximately in the same distance between which is like four inches from top to bottom, your car starts getting charging. Uh, charging. While your car is charging, it sends a signal to your phone, and you could, uh, do various things with it, like monitor, uh, screen time, uh, charging time, you know, like the distance between the platform, how close you need to get to a car, and that's how the system works. This is a little, uh, way, this is the version of our process. So, like, what we're doing is inputting a DC voltage supply, right? And we invert that into AC, and then that gets converted to, uh, that gets sent to a transmitter circuit, and then uh, that transmitter circuit sends the a signal to a transmitting coil. Once it uh, goes to the transmitting coil, it creates a magnetic field around the receiver coil, and then that gets sent to the receiver circuit. And then the receiver circuit um, rectifies the signal depending on the load. It lights up, the, uh, we use the LED light for our system to light up the LED, and then that LED signal gets sent to the market control where it operates with your mobile application. So for the related theory, this is basically um, some theories on how that we use and design of our charging unit. We also have to take a, take a look at raw power transfer, specifically a resonant inductive coupling, as well as we have to study electromagnetic fields, uh, such as mutual inductance, like these magical equations to see the behavior of these electromagnetic fields, as well as like the Gauss law for a base law induction, and Pierce law, study how it induces current, as well as um, charge effect on uh, uh, the fields that we're creating, as well as um, the whole goal for our presentation, uh, for our project, was to uh, utilize this at a resonant frequency. That way, we saw from research that this would not only increase efficiency but also range. Um, so something we saw through our testing last semester, we did with our resonant frequency. We were only able to power an LED like an inch away. Now with the coil design, we're able to power one like eight inches away. Um, and we have to look at the parallel series circuit resonant frequency. So this is the general schematic of just the hardware side of the software. So what we did was input a DC source, and then we generate a, a, a waveform, a square wave, and that gets sent to the IR2302 chip, which we're using. It's a, a half-bridge, one-phase inverter, and um, that sends a, a voltage, uh, it oscillates high a voltage, and then it gets sent to uh, our resonant circuit right here, and with, our, uh, with the desired capacitor values, depending on the load, uh, we get the wireless transmission. 
this is the journal uh, design of their, that's, as you can see over there, that size are transmitting coil attached to their capacitors needed, and then it transmits, and then as you can see, the LED turns on and connected with our smart device. So for the software portion of this project, we had incorporated numerous sensors all tied into an Arduino. For instance, the ultrasonic sensor, which would measure the distance between the transmitting coil as well as the receiving coil. An LCD display, so hypothetically speaking, it could be it could be attached to the receiving coil and every time you would go by your electric vehicle, it would give you this data. In this case, since we are getting the data from the uh, from the Arduino, it's from the serial monitor. Uh, a Bluetooth module, which can connect to your phone for application purposes. A voltage sensor module, which would read the voltage that would be uh, that would be coming in, and it would be connected directly in parallel with the battery, as we're going to see in the next slide. So this is the schematic, roughly, of what we had. The reason I mentioned roughly is because when I was uh, just designing this in a pretty way, I couldn't find a uh, voltage sensor module. So in this case, uh, we would have a voltage sensor module connected in parallel with the LED as shown uh, right there. And all of these would work together to provide a user-friendly environment. So as you can see, uh, this is the picture regarding our project. Um, we have our microcontroller uh, connected to the receiving end. The voltage meter is connected with the load to give out the proper voltage we're receiving. Uh, we have the ultrasonic sensor with the receiver that will give us the distance between the receiving and transmitter. Uh, we have an LCD display that also presents us the live data. And we went ahead and used the Bluetooth module that would, uh, that would transfer the data between um, our Arduino and our mobile application. So this would be easier uh, user friendly. So for the testing phase of our project, we first start with the unit test. We want to make sure all the components were working individually properly um, before assembling everything because it's easier problem solving that way. Uh, on the hardware side, we want to test the, the design of our inverters, transmitter, receiver, as well as off to see if it was working in residence, as well as our rectifier and the load. Um, it took a lot of uh, corrective actions, specifically getting the resonant frequency. There's a lot of going back and forth and tweaking it uh, to optimize range as well as efficiency. Uh, so during the one of designing and building the transmitter, constructing it, and the receiver, you can just already show this. For the software unit testing, we tested the voltage sensor, Bluetooth module, a CD display, and ultrasonic sensor. Uh, we tested each of these individually. So this way, uh, we know that uh, our modules work as well as we know how to properly use them. Uh, the app display serial monitor, we encountered some trouble, but because of the slight bug we had, we decided to proceed and come back to it. Um, so for us, for the integration test, this we checked that our software, software and hardware were working together in the charging unit. Um, this is just a table summarizing it. Uh, first, you have to make sure the receiver sense is being away from the transmitter, so it senses the distance would be normally for up to a road. And then also, the receiver sense is being over the transmitter. We utilize the ultrasonic sensor in this. Then also, um, the receiver is running power. This is where the transmitter coil would lose current in the receiving coil. Then also, to check um, power is being supplied to the load. For our, in our, our prototype, we use an LED to see if it's being lit up. Um, then also, uh, power is being monitored to the voltage sensor, getting correct readings. And uh, as well as the last step, which is the data being displayed on the mobile application. And for this, this is where the microcontroller, in our case, our Arduino was. Uh, communicating data to the application via Bluetooth. Uh, for the acceptance test, there were certain requirements we wanted to meet before proceeding. Uh, one of them was we wanted to make sure we could transfer power wirelessly. Uh, simply just to begin with, uh, we didn't regard the distance at first. Uh, that was the first thing. Secondly, uh, we wanted to make sure we were getting proper reading from the ultrasonic sensor. Uh, we wanted to make sure the voltage reader provided the correct output. We did this by uh, using a 9-volt battery to make sure we are getting the right reading. Uh, we wanted to display the voltage output to our mobile application as well as the LCD display. Uh, we're fortunate enough to pass all those tests and then proceed to integrate them. So let's try the product demonstration again. 
you can see we here we're simulating how like a car will approach um, uh, a parking spot where the transmitter right there would be on the ground and this is the receiver side, this would be connected to underneath the car. And it shows that our software side where it's getting the readings on the phone. And then we also, we did a, this is our first design, which is the coil, the small coil. Um, but the bigger coil, we were able to increase the range. Uh, but for our prototype, we first started with a smaller coil, just to have like kind of a scanning factor, but then we increased it to the bigger coil, which was 20 centimeters in diameter, and we were able to light the LED at, at, at like full brightness at like six inches. For our ideal design, we only one four, but this is just to make sure you now like if there's taller cars or something like that, as well as um, we were able to receive uh, still power, even though the LED was on the up of the past uh, nine inches. So for our for project completion, what we have completed thus far and where we intend to be in the future with this, if time was allowed, we would make this more, more appealing to the eye by protecting it in its own very own case. Another thing that we would consider is to switch this wire that you see in the video for let's wire. The reason being is that it's more applicable to two applications that involve high frequency. The reason being is that there will be a reduction in skin effect, meaning that AC current, instead of flowing on the surface of the conductor, it would, it would flow on the core of the actual conductor itself uh, within, the actual, uh, within the actual wire. And also the proximity effect, because the, the lid's wire is woven with the, these strands, uh, it, would, it would make the it will make the magnetic field not in a undesired pattern rather. And just as a side note, uh, we happened to pick and calculate which lit wire we would use, and that would be the one with 262 strands. That would be ideal for the skin effect that we want with high frequency in our case. Another thing, we saw a wave generator there. We want to construct our very own wave generator. Along with this, we want to finalize and make a more mobile friendly uh, mobile application as well as test this on an actual model car and implement any other any other sensors that would make this more appealing to the to the user to the consumer to make them buy it and use it constantly and if this were to go through before the production is ready we would certainly have a dedicated PCB board as well as make our very own microcontroller. Arduino is obviously open source, and we go ahead and make our very own board where with our own dedicated digital pins and analog pins and all of that. And we also use, uh, we would utilize rated components that are energy, energy saving. And for the whole build cost of it, considering the microcontroller, the sensor, the LCD, uh, the ultrasonic sensor, Bluetooth module, and the coils, as well as miscellaneous, which we put under the MOSFETs, it would come out to roughly $92. Uh, you made sure to be in compliance with the following standards of the whole project, the first being uh, wireless charging equipment for electric vehicles, microcontrollers for Arduino, resist uh, resistance measurement for the hardware portion, Bluetooth to transfer data, and SDLC because we first practiced with a uh, waterfall methodology and then we switched over to Agile because we found it worked better for us. Uh, just to know that the standards and like uh, codes for wireless charging equipment is still being developed since there's nothing out on the uh, market like completely that you still, if you want to order something like this, you can from third party companies, but it's custom designed for you. Um, so these uh, standards are constantly being updated as more research is being done. Um, as, for our, well, as well as for ethics, uh, we made sure to um, comply with the actually code and standards of ethics. Um, took proper precautions when designing our project. You know, we made sure to uh, ensure safety, uh, to you know, stay within the limits and the specs of our components, and go over them to not only measure our safety, but as well as safety of the user, as well as we made sure to use sustainable material, um, you know, eco-friendly. Uh, we were honest, realistic in the claims uh, made regarding the project specifications, and uh, our results. Uh, we also sought after 
uh, honest criticism from several faculty members as well as within the group. We offered um, each other uh, help and assist. We had a system of checks and balances where the hardware team and the software team would double check each other's work just to make sure our progress went through smoothly as well as ask each other for sometimes when problem solving it's just easier to get somebody else's opinion and maybe come up with new ideas. Um, we credit all researchers and contributors uh, to work the project properly. Uh, most of our research uh, that we utilize and help understand theory came from uh, MIT as well as a university in Sweden. Uh, they produce a paper every year on uh, wireless power transfer specifically for uh, uh, for electric vehicles. And then uh, we also post the further understand the wireless power transfer as well as pushing it for applying it to a new industry. These are just some of our references. And We'd like to thank Mr. Wang for helping us out and provide some part, but also helping us take the right part and finding the physics department for helping us protect our part. <coughs> Questions? Uh, if you just double the number of turns, how many turns would you have in your coils? Uh, for the small one or the big one? Uh, All right, so the big one was, uh, the diameter was about 20 centimeter with seven turns. Seven. Yes, and, and this was a 22 gauge copper wire. This was not the lift wire. We wanted to use the lift wire, but we didn't have enough time to implement it. And the smaller coil was approximately four centimeter, five centimeter. Five centimeter, five centimeter with 25 turns. Yeah. Did you try just doubling the number of turns? Above yes, the so yes. we saw, so to increase the distance, uh, you would ideally need to make a bigger coil, the bigger the diameter, the more distance you get. Uh, theoretically speaking, the diameter of the coil depends on the distance of the coil. So I say the coil is seven centimeters. You, you should be getting seven centimeter. However, when we tested it out, uh, I would our our LED would blink at seven centimeters. But if you were to like push it back, you'd still be receiving voltage input if you test it out from the source. But it was just not powerful enough to outside of the LED. The other thing is also with using more uh, turns of the wire, that would change the values of our capacitor. So would it be uh, change like the frequency? And uh, if it, we had to utilize more capacitors, it would uh, be also limited by how much voltage we can send into here, because our chip only handles 50 volts, whereas like um, these other prototypes and other researchers are using regular standard 50 volts. It's just those components for a prototype didn't make sense to buy, because um, they're just significantly expensive. And uh, also the capacitors, like the heat dissipation, uh, came to the fact that sort of kind of limited to how much the coil we could make. In other words, what Zane was mentioning about the coil itself, uh, this would be considered what is known as near field. So basically the distance of the, the diameter of the coil uh, is relative to the distance between the two coils in which the energy can be transferred. Go about Basically, the impedance. Um, so, for the rest of the frequency, it has to be like the impedance of the uh, inductor, which is our coil, that cancels out the capacitors. So, we just um, utilize the calculators for that. Then to make sure that the, the, the two impedances cancel each other out. And uh, uh, also, to, to go along with that, is that uh, we tested our circuit first, like the bigger coil, the operating oscillating it was the 80s. Does 82 frequency, and then you can see if you go one step up or down within a certain range, you're still power, but not as well. And if you went more than, I think, two uh, kilohertz of frequency, it just throws down. Measuring the efficiency of the whole thing? Yeah, so, um, yeah, so uh, I think for the bigger coil, the 20 centimeter in diameter, and when they were touching each other, we were receiving, it was like 43% efficiency. And then once, as soon as we went past an inch distance, it dropped down below 19. So this, uh, we believe the lift wire would help out with the efficiency, but we don't have time to test it. I think Dr. Amin had a question, I'm not sure. Uh, okay, thank you. No, yeah, you can. Uh, the electromagnetic field, uh, we first ran a software to see how far it would be away, and it, this technically would either be under the trunk or under the hood of the car, wherever like the battery is. 
and uh, it wouldn't go past that. Like, the field, so you would be safe sitting in your car or even walking around it. Uh, we even tested it, like, um, like, <laughs> like, see, like, yeah, our hands and whatever, what kind of material would get in the way. O only thing that, like, stopped, like, um, transfer, yeah, it was, like, a, it was, like, a phone or, like, metal, really interfered with it. Front and back. Are we afraid to not self-efficient? Yes. Uh, for, well, for like the bigger coil, we were able to light the LED up to, it was like within seven inches. After that, it's still, we, our sensor still received the uh, power, but it's not enough to light it. So it depends, like, uh, even when they're touching, it's only 43% efficiency. So for some people, that would be not be efficient. So a lot of the calculations also depend on what load you are inputting. So that's why we want to create universal charges, uh, universal solutions. Like let's say if we're following a certain solution, then every car manufacturer in the future will follow the same solution. So this way we will avoid the whole issue of like, you know, uh, the maximizing the load issue. Like we will gain the maximum efficiency, maximum charge. Yeah. Thank you guys.